Before we begin today's podcast, I would like to announce that I'll be attending the Mind Body Soul Expo on Saturday, September 4th in beautiful Saratoga Springs, New York. The event will be held at the Saratoga Springs Convention Center, 522 Broadway, in downtown Saratoga Springs, which is 30 minutes north of Albany, and admission is free to the public. Come see over 130 vendors, 16 lectures, and eight free classes and workshops. Registration is not required, but if you would like to tell me you're coming, please let me know on my website. Go to vitalbioenergetics.com and click on workshops. I can't wait to see you there. And now for today's podcast. Welcome to High Vibes. I am your host, Bill G, with co-host Nina G. At High Vibes, we're looking into what it means to be a fourth dimensional being in an ever-changing world. We hope that by listening to this podcast, you can feel a greater sense of peace and connection as we collectively raise our energetic vibration to the next level. And now for today's podcast. Hello and welcome to High Vibes. I'm Bill G and I'm here with Nina and today we're going to continue our conversation about constructs and this this week we're going to concentrate on archetypes. Now archetypes are um, all over the place. I mean there's a lot of people have written a lot of stuff about archetypes. Um, some are better than others. Um, I think it was Carl Jung that talked about uh, 12 archetypes or 12 main archetypes. Yeah, there's like four basic and then there's uh, or three basic or something like that. And then there's then there's the expanded and then there's even more expansion. But I don't think Jung goes into the expanded. And even on the time temple charts, we have a um, the dominant life pattern, which is basically a chart of archetypes. Uh, but recently we developed a new chart uh, that focuses on literary archetypes. Um, which takes their cues from classical literature. And I really liked this because it shows the kinds of stories that we connect to throughout our lifetime. Um, and they're actually like kind of encoded into our DNA. Like when we see a story or watch a movie, we connect with these characters because we already know their stories. And unlike the uh, the young archetypes, um, these are things that we can really identify with out in movies and in the books that we love. Um, the, the, the young ones are great, and I love Carl Jung. I read everything he ever wrote when I was in college, and um, he's like my hero. But uh, these seem to do a better job, I think, in really kind of describing to the, um, the seeker uh, what it is that they're playing out and what it is other people are playing out with them. Yeah, especially in, within third density, because that's what is, this is all about. This is about how do I get along in third density? Because I'm trying to um, make sense of it, I'm trying to grow with it, and, to, and the whole idea here is we need to get to that choice point. And how do we get to that choice point when we are constantly pl playing the parts in a play that it keeps going over and over and over again? Now we divide the archetypes into major feminine and masculine archetypes, and they're all named after classical archetype characters within stories. Uh, like we have Aphrodite, Artemis, Athena, Demeter, Hera for the feminines, and then we have Apollo, Ares, Hades, Hermes for the masculine. And depending on what's happening in your life or what kind of story that you're playing out, certain archetypes are going to come to the surface and they're going to tell your story. The idea here is to bring it into conscious awareness. So rather than going through each one of these and giving kind of vague examples, let's just go right into a case study here because I think understanding how this works in the dynamic of a relationship or a story will make this a lot easier to understand. So what better case study to talk about than our own? Holy crap. So here <laughs> we go. We're going to get a little uh, personal here. So when we pulled the charts 
for the two of us. We came up with Athena and Apollo. So, you know, on the on the surface, that sounds pretty cool. It does sound cool. Uh, but then when you look at the archetypes, maybe it's not so... It's kind of... So, Athena is the father's daughter. And which, which, you know, I fully admit to, but I got to say that, that that really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the businessman. <laughs> which, again... Uh, I like to think of myself as a rather sensitive type of guy and uh, kind of approachable and whatever, but the businessman is uh, neither one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's start off with it with the uh, the father's daughter here. Uh, so uh, the father's daughter sees herself as an exceptional woman as she allies herself with men in order to achieve her goals. She's not generally interested in women's causes as she sees her rise to power as inextricably linked to her male friendships. Now, I don't know if that's entirely truthful to me, but um, it, it's very interesting because I've always had mostly male friends. Right. I think now, as I'm approaching 50, um, I have more women friends, absolutely. Yes. But um, definitely, uh, definitely a lot of male friends who were very protective and um, just really wanted to, to do things and take care of me all through my life. Yeah, and another aspect of the of the father's daughter, too, is that the she feels um, uh, that the men are not just protectors, but that she sees herself as one of the boys more than well, a... Well, I really tried. Yes. I really tried. I really tried to go camping. I really tried. <laughs> yeah. But the but the father's daughter is not a good camper either, because the 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 father's daughter um, is the type of person who loves the concept of camping, and will read some great books about it. Like oh for uh, sure yeah, like one of your favorite books is like uh, North by Se- East. Oh North by East by uh, Kent. Yeah. And Wilderness, also by Kent. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Yes, great books. Uh, and one of your favorite shows is Survivor. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. So I really get into all that, but only in my mind. In your mind, yeah. yeah. Because, uh, you know, get you in a tent in the middle of the wilderness. And, I'm grumpy. And and and, and calling the... Uh, uh, the air, the the the, the, the Airbnb, the, yeah. the nearest B and B, because you know, on our honeymoon, we tried to go camping, and we ended up uh, at the uh, at the nearest B and B. Now, see, that was me trying to be uh, pleasing mm-hmm. and trying to uh, be one of the guys, right? Um, to to please you, but mm-hmm. I hated it, right? All the all the way, right? So so hotel we went, and hotel we went, and, and you know, it was all right. You know, they, they they took pity on us and gave us a good discount. Oh gosh, that place was amazing. They had the best food. <laughs> yeah, they're not around anymore. I mean, we've been married for twenty five years. It's been a, it's been a while. So, um, the the father's daughter fears intimate friendships, especially with other women, because she fears her own femininity. Would you, would you? No, I love intimate friend, and I do have I do have intimate friendships. I don't appreciate friendships that are just kind of. Uh, associative where you see them once in a while and you're like hey how's the weather what you been doing oh that's great i don't like those kind of relationships at all in fact i have a relationship now that is kind of dwindled um to that Mm -hmm. um and i don't i i don't know my place in it i can't feel my ground in it so i would say that that wasn't necessarily true but especially with you um because we're talking about our relationship right i really do want that but uh, because of your role in it, I think I do kind of fear it also because that means that I would have to sacrifice a piece of myself. Right. So let's talk a moment here about the villain aspect. Oh, the yeah, because those are way fun. <laughs> and yes. I'm sure I have many of those aspects. The villain aspect of the father's daughter is the backstabber. The backstabber takes the strategic aspect of the father's daughter to a greater extreme as she is perfectly will, willing to trample anyone who gets in the way of her goals. I think maybe that's somewhat true, huh? <laughs> yeah. They she... tend to act like that sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I can be really loud <laughs> and really angry. Really, yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. Really. <laughs> If she is betrayed, especially by a oh man whom my she trusted. Oh, goodness. You all know who you are. 
her revenge will be calculated and complete. The backstabber mistrusts all women, especially those who fight for women's rights because it threatens her status among other men whom she relies on her own power, and she confides in nobody. Now, I don't know about that women aspect here, but definitely um, when you are feeling like your back, against, back is against the wall and you're in that calculated revenge mode, you don't trust anybody and you don't confide in anybody. Right, that's very true. But I do love like the whole sisterhood thing. And I do have a few very, very close women friends who I absolutely adore. So, um, but, but we're talking about our relationship here. So yes. that, that sort of thing doesn't really come in because you're not a woman. I'm sure if you were a woman, yeah. maybe that would. Yeah, yeah, but uh, again, when when in those times in our relationship, and again, we've been together for a long time, when um, it has moved over into that backstabber uh, thing, um, we, we went quite a while there. Uh, you know, there was there was I, I can think of at least one or two times when we didn't we didn't talk for a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> So, um, so, okay, so now let's talk about me here, uh, the businessman. Thing. You are so the businessman. <laughs> you have always been, well, actually, no. You were not the businessman before we got married, but it was like the day that we got married and then we came home. You turned into the businessman. It's like, it's like you ripped off your fun clothes and underneath was a three-piece suit. Okay, well, so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez. All right. <laughs> Therapy on the air. Um, so here we go. Uh, as the name implies, the businessman is the masculine character who is constantly thinking about his work and very little else, even when he's supposed to be spending time with his family. It's so funny, too, because I always used to, like, when I when I joke with you, and, and I call you the businessman, don't mm -hmm. I? All the time. And I have for such a long time, and I didn't even know about this. Yeah. Um, so even when he's on vacation, he will find ways to get work done. And I cannot tell you that, that I, 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 that is me. That is me in a, a nutshell. If we were going on vacation, I'm like, okay, do they have Wi-Fi? Oh, they have Wi-Fi. Oh, that means I can see clients or I can do my, I can, or I can do internet work or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be freaking on vacation, people. Got to relax sometimes. Yes. So the businessman carefully plans out every aspect of his life. He is efficient and does not like to waste time on trivial matters like emotions and intimacy. That's really hard for me being like a Scorpio too. Yeah. It's and it's it's been a it's been a thorn in our relationship mm -hmm. that um, the businessman cares about his career and he's hyper focused on achievement of his goals. He enjoys being the calm voice of reason in a room full of chaos. Now that I appreciate completely. And he expects to be listened to when it comes to ha any decision. And I, you have been. Um, I enjoy competition, especially if the competition requires strategic planning and execution. Um, I am, especially strategy games. You are I, very competitive. Yes. yes. <laughs> Even with me. And I'm like, hey, let's just have fun. And you're like, no, I will kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> the businessman fears losing his job or career because his entire identity is wrapped up in it. He fears intimacy because he fears himself to be too shallow to be a loving partner to anyone. The businessman also fears chaos and rejection, both of which can push him into a deep depression. And absolutely that is true. Yeah, um, you've been there a couple times. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've lost my job a number of times, <laughs> um, either through attrition. Um, I've been fired a couple of times or whatever, because that's the other aspect of the businessman, too, is that... Um, I like getting things done my way, and uh, if I have a boss that says, no, you've got to do it my way or the highway, I generally would choose the highway rather than trying to adapt to the situation, and then feel really, really depressed about it once I get fired. So, uh, yeah, this describes me to uh, pretty much of a T. I mean, it's not all of you, and, and these things aren't all of a person, obviously. We are very complex beings. Yes, but again, we're, we're focusing here on our relationship, and I've always generally seen our relationship as kind of a business partnership um i mean look at look at what we have here now with with vital bioenergetics right. it we it, work very very well together mm -hmm. we and, have the same sort of 
goals and a work ethic. So we we work really really well. We always have, no mm-hmm. matter what we were doing. And my and my relationship with you is uh, validated a lot of, in a lot of ways by being the business partner. Mm. And even when we were not business partners, I kept trying to get you to be yeah. my business partner. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, come on! I don't. I can't be. I can't have that deep emotional intimacy. So I'm going to find another way to get deep emotional intimacy by turning it into a business, <laughs> <laughs> or a competition, or whatever. <laughs> but that aspect has deepened our friendship too, which is really important. Yes, and I think that's why we've been together all this long. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the um, the villain aspect of the businessman. The vi- villain aspect is uh, the traitor. And uh, as with the businessmen, work comes first for the trader, but at a more nefarious extreme. For example, if the businessman discovers that his company is poisoning the environment, the trader will double down on the side of the company in order to protect his interests. The trader will not hesitate to use blackmail, bribery, and murder to in order to get the job done, and he dis- uh, despi- dispenses his form of justice with emotional distance. In his heart, the traitor believes himself to be the hero, doing what must be done when others cannot. And this is definitely played out when, especially when you were an accountant and you were working for a big company Mm. and you had to be there super long hours, especially Mm -hmm. during that that end of the year. Crunch times, yeah. And, you know, uh, I've been sick a lot in my life and so I would be at home sick not able to get out of bed or whatever and you're like well i really have to get this this thing done over here even if it wasn't so so important it was very important to you right right like if i if i needed to go in to work on a saturday even if you were running a fever or whatever i'd go to work because it was important to me to show up to be there at work and in retrospect i'm really regret uh, doing that because you needed me there and I wasn't. And then um, I've worked for companies where um, I had to be a part of things nefarious. I mean, I think we've all been in those places mm-hmm. where um, we were told that, you know, you're told as an employee, you do this or you lose your job. And if your identity is all wrapped up in the job, you go and do it. Um, you didn't like it. Oh my gosh! It it, it killed. Caused it, it caused you so much agita. Oh my gosh! I, I mean, I was in sales for a little while, and when I found out that the product I was selling was not just not any good, it was actually bad for people, and I still went to work. Oh my god! That was that put me in a deep depression. I worked for a um, a company where I could see right in their books they were committing crimes, uh, you know, tax fraud, that kind of stuff, and I just. I still went to work. I didn't quit the job. Yeah, you would tend to get sick mm-hmm. and then um, decide to leave like shortly after, like maybe getting the flu and spending the week in bed with the flu or mm-hmm. something like that. You, you would kind of pull yourself away in that way or you would sabotage yourself. Yes, yes. Yeah, I would, I would make... So leaving was not, not something you could tolerate unless you had a really good reason to so you gave yourself a reason to and again that goes back to our relationship as well um even when you know in those moments in our relationship when things got tough i toughed it out because Mm -hmm. my identity was so wrapped up in our relationship as kind of this business thing that you know and i I, because they're they're inextricably linked and so um, I was willing to put up with a lot of craziness or a lot of bad stuff or, or just stuff that we needed to work through that I didn't have a lot of energy to work through, but I stuck to it because um, quitting was not an option, which can be a good thing, but it also can be a bad thing too. Yeah, it can be kind of abusive in some ways I mean, if you think about it oh absolutely and actually the relationship i had right before you i was still doing that same role and that relationship holy crap the crap that i put up with the abuse that i put up with because losing i i 
put my self-worth on the on the relationship itself and it didn't matter how badly i was being abused it didn't matter how um emotionally destroyed i was i just stayed in it yeah i stayed in it because losing it would have meant that i have invested all of this time money and Mm -hmm. whatever and and then it would all be for nothing and so i think that's another reason why some people stick together when they really shouldn't be so where does this leave us (laughs) who what is how does this kind of define who we are in our relationship and it definitely does kind of explain, you know, why we've been together for as long as we have mm-hmm. and why we continue to be together, why we continue to be good business partners, why we continue just to be, you know, better people as a result. There's a lot that balances out in our particular personalities in this pairing of archetypes. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot that we learn about ourselves and can get over by right. being in this pairing. Right. But on the other hand, there are things that we need to work on. And knowing these archetypes allows us a foundation to work on those things. Um, For example, um, knowing that this is the construct of our relationship. Yeah, this is the thing. So a construct, if you didn't know, is something that is either placed upon you or something you you placed upon yourself. It's something that's not yourself that you've taken in and decided is part of you. And and maybe you take it on for so long you don't know anymore what is you and what is construct. But this is something that we took upon ourselves to not only to learn. Mm-hmm. I mean, but that's really the thing, right? Even even the worst of it, um, we can overcome that. And so it's it's a learning situation. Right, because there are some bad aspects of both the father's daughter and the businessmen that we work on. And yeah. knowing that they're there, being able to identify, and that's what makes these charts so interesting, is that, okay, we've identified it, we have decided, you know, we made a choice here, we're going to stick together. Mm-hmm. We love each other, we learn and stick together. So where does that leave us? It's saying, okay, now we know where we need to work on in our relationship to make ourselves a little, I need to work on being more intimate or being more uh, emotionally vulnerable with you. Or just maybe being more flexible and being able to balance work and home. Right, exactly. And balance has been a, been a struggle for me. And you're a Libra, so balance is like everything. And it is your struggle, yeah. like, and you're even in your sign. Right, right. And and signs are another construct. They but are not, another construct. That's another but, show. Yeah. <laughs> that we're not going to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because there are lots of other shows out there that do a much better job than we can. I think from my aspect, um, I think the businessman has really brought a lot of balance into my life. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I get bored. And I like to bounce around to different things. And I can pick things up and put them down especially jobs Mm. and projects, um, a lot of times I'll loop back around and finish something. Um, But I think the the strict uh, work ethic of the businessman and the ability to kind of... um, Follow through. Follow through and really um, focus. Focus and stick-to-itiveness, yeah. Yeah, I think I've really learned uh, an awful lot from that. And um, it's brought a lot of stability to an otherwise kind of chaotic life. Right, right. Because this this um, uh, this archetype does do best, I believe, with a someone who kind of brings order to that chaos. Because mm-hmm. um, if you paired up with a different kind of archetype, like the fool or the artist, um, then you, what you're looking at is a um, a long-term relationship that's going to be um, just full of drama. Yeah, and, and I'd be a little lost. Mm-hmm. Another aspect that I think I've definitely, uh, going forward, ha- have learned and can continue to learn from is um, to really be there for myself and not really be so reliant mm-hmm. On people, I've always had 
people around me who just wanted to take care of me, wanted to do things for me. I've really never wanted for anything. Um, and I've really never had to do a whole lot for myself because I always had a lot of men just here, let me do this for you. Let me, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and now, you know, with the businessman who's not very into that, you know, I take care of myself. Well, I don't know if that's entirely true. No, because... it isn't. You you do a very nice job of being the um, the major breadwinner, and you do take care of me. Yeah, I mean, you get breakfast in bed, and you get. <laughs> but I'm learning how to take care of myself yes. in a better way. I think, which is the whole point of being in this relationship, so I can overcome um, what I used to be, which was um, the oh, maiden. The maiden. Oh yeah. Well, that. Well, the thing is, the maiden comes up very often for you in the way that other people perceive you. Yeah, people have told me, especially like family members, have told me in in very strange ways that I'm flighty, that I'm uh, not serious. Mm -hmm. Needy. Needy. Extremely needy. Because the maiden, um, just so you know, is uh, is a archetype that is... Um, playful, carefree, self-confident and optimistic, but also um, cares about her relationship with her parents, is a very dependent person. Um, and so people kind of look down on her as not as very uh, strong character, uh, which, you know, kind of blows our mind sometimes because, you know, I, I know you quite well. And when people say, oh, she's so flighty, I'm like, She's not. She's the least flighty person that I know, but that's how you come off for certain people, especially members of your own family. Right. What makes all of this very fascinating is that you really, in your personal life, you don't fit that archetype at all of what other people perceive you as. In I definitely native. used to. I can see that. Where you are now is you're a very self-sufficient person, but on top of that, you're also a an extraordinary nurturing person especially to our son you're so on top of our household making sure we have a uh, orderly place to live and also the business holy crap i don't i cannot see myself where i would be in this business without you um you spend so much time doing research and we bounce ideas i mean this whole podcast wouldn't be possible without you so wow and that does not, the, um, the maiden archetype would not touch this kind of life with a 10 foot pole. So, my family, I just, you know, we doused this one. My family sees me as the fool. And so, the fool is the little boy who refuses to grow up, but uh, doesn't feel inferior to other men. Uh, or, uh, and people who take their lives too seriously bore him. And the fool loves to play and avoid serious relationships and doesn't think about his the consequences of his actions. And man, I, I hear that every time I have a conversation with my folks. But I think that your family, you know, they're used to a certain line of, of men who do a certain job or mm-hmm. a certain set of jobs. And, and it's, a, it's a very serious nature, and they're very hardworking people. And because you've kind of gone out of that, because you used to be a teacher, and right. you used to be an accountant, and, and that seemed to be really okay for them, because that fell in line with what your family's kind of used to seeing the men doing. Right. But ever since you became more woo, and really went out on your own, started your own business, something you actually really, really love, it's, it's I think the problem is they just don't understand. And, and you know, that makes sense. Yeah, and it was a it, and I have to admit that the businessman in me had a hard time with me losing my job and then deciding to go into this business um, all in because it's a risk. It was risky, and but my you know my po- folks aren't really into this. My family's not really into this kind of stuff, and so they see me as being a la di da. I'm going to do this woo thing, and, and you it's know, not really serious. And it's, it's not, not really, really. It's a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> but I think for you, um, the bravery that it took to 
leave the workaday world, the, the office job, to go out on your own was, you know, crazy brave. And then to just jump into it with both feet and to say no more of that old life, I'm going to take on this new one. And that is not the fool. That is someone who has thought about life, who is wise in their decisions, what they've made, and they know themselves. Yeah. Right. And so what they don't grasp about you is that in all of these years of doing what you were told and what was expected of you, you've really found yourself and then just decided to go your own way and make that your, your outside world too. What, what, the stuff that was inside, you've made it on the outside now. And so you've kind of completed this very interesting journey, um, which was extremely brave. And I don't know a lot of people who've, who've done it. Mm-hmm. And so what do we do with the people in our lives that <laughs> see us as archetypes that just don't fit and refuse to see us any other way? I think, uh, again, we keep saying to stand in your own power and to just be who you are and just to insist to be who you are. Um, I've had a few people kind of change their tune. If not, you know, maybe it was just outwardly toward me because, you know, like I said before, I can get loud and angry. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But, um, you know, they don't talk about it with me anymore. And it's it seems to be okay about what I'm doing. Um, and who I am. Um, But I had to insist on that. I had to insist on people stop treating me like a little tiny child who didn't know herself and didn't know what she wanted to do because, yeah, for a long time, I also did what I was told. Mm -hmm. And for me, too, I had to say to my family, this is my business. This is what I do. And I love it. And I'm happy. I can't tell you how many times I've told members of your family, my family, I don't understand what it is that you think I'm unhappy doing this work. Yeah, people think I'm unhappy too, and I don't know why. Because they feel that if I'm not doing a work a day nine to five, I am not happy. And I have to look at them straight in the eye and say, I am happy. Get off my back. (laughs) (laughs) I'm good. I am good to go. And this is gonna. This is my life, and I cannot see myself ever doing anything else. It's so funny. I I would tell people a lot that you know yourself best. You know your body's the best. You know your mind the best. Um, you know your children the best. You are the best person to direct the course of all of these things. And no matter what anyone tells you that you should be doing or that, you know, please, you know, you got to take this advice because I don't think you're, you're thinking about this. You in the end are always going to be the one that's right. Um, They may have something good to say where maybe you are missing the point and you're veering off a little bit, but um, to come right down to it, you really are going to know yourself best and whatever direction you decide to take will either take you to learning of learning that you really need to do. Or it's going to take you toward your own happiness. And both of those avenues lead eventually toward your own happiness anyway. Right. So if you want this kind of work done for yourself, figuring out, you know, where are my archetypes within my relationships? Where are my archetypes in terms of how other people see me or where my life path is? Please, by all means, go to vitalbioenergetics.com slash book online and uh, do a session uh, 30 minutes free wasn't uh, this fun oh this was hilarious. oh my gosh i had a great time doing this and we just looked this up just now yes just right before we started right because actually to we be were honest quite surprised. <laughs> to be honest before we started we didn't know what the hell we were going to be talking about <laughs> so this is good So, um, yeah, so uh, you want to do this for yourself, come book online. Uh, Like I said, uh, if you're new, you can do a 30-minute free consultation. Um, We can do, I do all of my sessions online uh, through Zoom. And now through email. And through email as well. Like if you have a busy schedule and you just want to ask a few questions and um, you don't necessarily want to connect on on Zoom in that way, because I know 
some introverts like me, they would prefer to not. Right? Yeah. Well, and, um, so, and actually some people don't have this time and some people have bad bandwidth, too. That's true. So if you've got a, one of those bandwidth issues, the, you know, you live out in the sticks and you're on a, on a satellite or whatever, or dial up for a god. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh my email god. might be, uh, you know, kind of a nice option. Yeah. So, uh, so do that. And uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. For more information about Bill and Nina G, please visit our website at www.vitalbioenergetics.com. See you next time.